the last 22 minutes of the Sportsman Zone for this Thursday and we're switching now to cricket. Just less or just over an hour ago, delegates of the Jamaica Cricket Association chose Dr. Donovan Bennett as their president for the next three years. Dr. Bennett defeated incumbent Wilfred Billy Heaven in the election held at the Jamaica Conference Centre in Kingston. 99 delegates were eligible to vote and after a delay which lasted about an hour and a half, we're told to verify the eligible voters. Uh, we had 99 uh, votes casted, 30 siding with the incumbent and the remaining 67 favoring the challenger. Dr. Bennett, who sat as first uh, vice president in Heaven's administration, ready to hit the ground running in his new post. We're going to start at the under 13 level. That'll be our first, um, um, our first task will be to start building from there. Because if you build it on the 13 and you build it properly, properly, then the following year you'll have on, on the 15 cricketers. And the following year you'll have on the 17 cricketers. And it goes along like that. Um, there's also another gap in that um, pyramid, just, just below the top in the pyramid, we have an under 23 gap. But when players um, leave the under 19 level, sometimes they get lost because there's not an under 3 level to absorb them and to keep them going in the game. So it's an under 13 and an under 23 program that we're going to start off with. And it's going to be all about cricket. Yes, yeah, so that's a new president of the Jamaica Cricket Association, Dr. Donovan Bennett. Now in conceding, the outgoing president expressed pride in his tenure tenure at the helm. There were a lot of positives that we, we did, a lot, of, um, a lot of improvements that we have made. When we went there, we had 17 years of back tax not paid, 17 years of returns not filed. We brought that up to, up to speed. The company is now compliant. We had a system where there was no, not even electricity at, at, at Savannah Park. We have that there now. And uh, the system of governance was very weak. CWI, in, back in the day, sent funds to an independent firm to pay on behalf of the JCA. We have corrected all of that and we have built back confidence into, into the operations of the JCA. Yeah, so not surprisingly, um, Billy Heaven um, focusing on things that he felt he did a, a good job with, but Kerry Scott, who was our commentator on the show yesterday, previewing what could have happened at uh, the elections today, did suggest that he thought Dr. Bennett would win this election and uh, credited uh, Billy Heaven for some of the things that he was able to put in place structurally with the Jamaica Cricket Association. But um, I think the, the delegates have spoken, and now Dr. Bennett has the mantle of uh, taking Jamaica's cricket forward. Kerry also, Lance, in his preview and analysis, spoke about the gap that he expected would happen today at the yeah. polls, and I think that's so important that we mention it because that's exactly what transpired. It's a landslide. Yeah, it's a landslide for sure. Um, yeah, for sure I expected Billy Heaven to, of course, focus on the positives. He has been at the helm for 10 years, which, of course, speaks volumes, the length of time he would have served in that capacity. What I would like to do, though, is, you know, of course, look forward with Dr. Donovan Bennett at the helm. Um, for quite some time, I feel as if Jamaica, they have a lot of talent, but, you know, where administrative issues are concerned, the talent, you know, I think sometimes suffer because if you don't get the support, I always say administration and talent goes hand in hand. You find the countries where their administrators put a lot of emphasis on development in, of course, infrastructure, in ensuring the players are comfortable when it comes to just basic necessities, you know, things that, of course, will help improve their game, they tend to do better. And I can just speak personally for, about my country, Trinidad and Tobago, where, of course, you know, we have a lot of facilities that has continued to be developed. You know, cricket is one of the sports that we spend a lot of time investing in. Um, it goes hand in hand with our government. Whichever government comes in power, you know, they recognize the importance of cricket, the unity. So I now will be looking forward to see what Dr. Donovan Bennett does for Jamaica and, of course, the entire Cricket Association. 
For me, Lance, I want to, of course, start by seeing a lot more cricket being played here in Jamaica. Um, I don't know how much uh, power he will have where that is concerned, but I think his role as president is to, of course, start that discussion. Start the discussion, engage the stakeholders. Sponsorship, where Jamaica cricket is concerned as well, it's now up to him to, of course, engage the right people. So I think... He's gotten the opportunity. Many a times, vice presidents love to say, well, you know, we have to go in the direction of the president. They set the mandate. We're just working with their vision. He gets the opportunity now to have a vision to make a massive improvement. And I'm hoping that it's all for the good, for the better of Jamaica and the cricket. Yeah, one of the things that we've got to look at as well is that, and it's, it's I think, instructive that the show started today with the, Barbados Prime Minister speaking at the cricket conference in Port of Spain and she was suggesting that government has a role in facilitating the development and the evolution of, of, of cricket in the Caribbean even though she made it clear that they aren't interested in in, in, in running the right, cricket. Right, the day-to-day -day yeah, yeah, but they, they have to create a platform to ensure that the infrastructures for cricket development can function well. And uh, there's been a growing feeling in Jamaica that the current government isn't too high on the cricket possibilities. And I think part of Dr. Bennett's mandate now is to sit down and have a discussion with the government. and uh, His plans. Yeah, his... And, and ensure that the government gets, you know, his, his well, gets buy-in from what he has to say. Um, to develop the cricket because there is, as you just mentioned, very little cricket being played in Jamaica at the moment. International cricket, I mean, the Talawas lost its franchise in Jamaica and uh, there was no bid to stage World Cup matches and the government had put its cards on the table regarding the profitability of those ventures. So that is the, the issue they have. But I think there is a, some responsibility for the Cricket Association to promote their sport and ensure that from a government standpoint, the government is able to see what they are seeing and to help them move cricket forward. Because I think um, from, a, from a Caribbean perspective, Jamaica appears to be behind. Right, and you say behind. Yeah. Right, you say behind. And I think that is, it's such a sad discussion. And I'll say why. Because we do need to have the development of the future Jamaican cricketers. And why I say so, Lance, is because Jamaica is the country that would have produced some of the best cricketers ever. We have Stefani Taylor playing for the West Indies women right now, still lighting up for the West Indies. Once she's not injured, of course, we just saw her exploits in the ODI. She is Jamaican. A lot of the male cricketers, and it's too many to name, of course. But let me just say Universe Boss, Chris yeah, Gale. Yeah. Of my time, you know, looking at him and all of that. Marlon Samuels. As I said, it's so many. Yeah. I could just, you know, and I don't want to leave La anybody. Lawrence Rowe, Jackie Hendricks, George Headley. Correct. Uh, yeah, Headley is, is widely regarded as the greatest batsman the West Indies has produced. So I think the Jamaica Cricket Association, based on the history and the legacy of Jamaica's um, cricket, came before has a duty to ensure that they develop the future of Jamaican cricketers. And I don't see that happening yeah. because, you know, for quite some time, the um, Cricket Association has just not been having enough cricket being played here. And I think that's his first assignment yeah. for me. I want to see more youngsters, you know, playing cricket here in Jamaica and just developing the talent because the talent is here. Yeah. But how do we move forward developing it is yeah. the issue. Yeah, well, one of the greats of uh, Caribbean cricket um, from Jamaica is Michael Holding. Exactly. And he spoke today at the opening day of the CARICOM cricket conference being hosted by the TNT Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley. And uh, Holding, we understand, was very emotional in what he had to say today about West Indies cricket and its uh, current standing in world cricket. My name is Richard, an English gentleman who was the liaison officer between the Azure and West Indies Cricket Board came to me at the back of the bus. I was sitting at the back of the bus on my own. Came to me at the back of the bus and showed me an accreditation printed for one of the gentlemen from the Azure. Printed and given to him by someone from the West Indies Cricket Board. Now we're talking about Johnny Walker. And Johnny Walker was spelled J-O-H-N-N-Y. 
come on, folks. You have a sponsor putting thousands and thousands of dollars in your product, and you cannot even spell the sponsor's name correctly. I'm getting emotional about this thing that hurts me. We need to look after the sponsors because they are the ones who bring their money. We need to make sure that they are happy and confident that their funds are being spent correctly, that someone isn't siphoning it off, as we have seen. And that way we have a better chance of looking after our cricketers. If there is no cricket on the ground, all this love that Jack Callis and people around the world have for West Indies cricket, it will not last unless we are producing on the cricket field. No one is going to love West Indies cricket for the name West Indies cricket. They loved West Indies cricket for what we produced. Going back to Sir Larry Constantine right through the doubles and Sir Vivan current cricketers. Yeah, tears there from Michael Holding, who is very passionate about West Indies cricket and uh, what it has given world cricket. And, you know, we keep hearing people speak globally about the value and the respect that they have for West Indies cricket. But for decades now, Mariah, the, the cricket has been pretty poor coming from the West Indies. And um, uh, Dr. Irfan Ali, the president of Guyana, also spoke at the conference, obviously Mike Holding joining there by a, by a Zoom connection, but it's a two-day conference that's being staged there. It's the Cricket West Indies and CARICOM, the governments sitting down in a two-day seminar in, 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 in Trinidad and Tobago to talk about the issues surrounding West Indies cricket. And uh, President Ali in Guyana was also a part of that today. And then we have the threats. We cannot leave this conference without discussing the threats. The threats with the growing North American cricket that can bring in a lot more fans, a lot more revenue. I believe that we need to examine whether we need to move West Indies Cricket Board, West Indies Cricket from West Indies Cricket Board to the American Cricket Board. Because we have to now work towards owning cricket in Americas. And how do we develop a strategy where West Indies Cricket become the owner of cricket within the Americas? These are things that I think we have to address. I think CPL is an opportunity. We have to work to see how we can expand and build on this opportunity to lead us into the best form of franchise cricketing. In Guyana, we are working with the West Indies Cricket Board and uh, CPL and the ICC to launch a new product for the region that will position the region in the global market. And that is the World Premier League. That will replace, we are hoping, can replace what used to be the Champions League. And that, that, that league would have had the best sides coming together to play for, uh, to, to recognize the best franchise team. Yeah, that's uh, President Irfan Ali, the president of Guyana, one of the younger Caribbean leaders. And you hear his narrative. He has a lot of new thoughts, Mariah. And uh, we expect to have some more of these sound bites from this conference on tomorrow's show. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's sort of such an important um, conference. Yes. It's so important that the leaders, um, you know, meet and have these discussions. And Lance, I'm, I'm also looking forward to tomorrow's show because I have a personal interest where cricket especially is concerned. So we'll talk more on this tomorrow. Yeah. All right, let's take a quick break and come back. We have interactive just for you.